Let's raise those big questions then tonight that this High Court order has done. Does the High Court order of the Delhi High Court saying that the right to protest is not terrorism set a precedent? Will bail be the rule once again and jail an exception in such cases? Will the UAPA, the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, be used much more sparingly? Some of the questions I'm going to raise. I'm joined in a moment by Justice Deepak Gupta, former Supreme Court judge, will join us. Indira Jaising, former Additional Solicitor General, who's taken up a number of UAPA cases, is already with us. Yashovardhan Azad, former IPS officer with us. Dushyan Dave, senior lawyer with us from the Supreme Court. Appreciate all of you joining us. Let me come to you, uh, Indira Jaising, first, because you have taken up a number of these UAPA cases. And I want to understand from you, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act has resulted in a number of people not getting bail for years, sometimes without a trial. Will today's verdict make any difference in your view, Indira Jaising? You're on mute, ma'am. You're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Right. Uh, Rajdeep, I was holding up the uh, UAPA Act for you. Can you see it here? Yes, okay. I can. So to answer your question, the UAPA Act has a very, very clear definition of what is terrorism. I have a big question to ask of the law enforcement agencies today. Do they read, do they read the UAPA Act? Do they understand the definition of terrorism? What the court has basically said today is that the, the UAPA Act is not attracted to the facts of the case relating to the three people Mm -hmm. who today have been granted bail. It's just not attracted. Why? Because what they did might amount to participating in a riot. And I'd like to say this loud and clear. My understanding of the law is every riot is an offense, but not every riot is a UAPA offense. This is what our law enforcement agencies failed to understand. And this is the message that the High Court has given out to the police and to those who lodge these FIRs. Before lodging an FIR, be careful under which sections of the law. One can understand an FIR of this kind in the facts of this case on rioting, on violence, but every act of violence is not an act of terrorism. This is what we need to understand. And it's regrettable that young people, mm -hmm. college-going students picked up kept behind closed bars until we get this fantastic judgment by the High Court, which recognizes the difference between what is an act of violence and what is an act of terrorism. Of course, both are acts of violence, but one is an act of terrorism, another is not. Okay, I think you make a very important point. The fact that they participated in a chakka jam, which many are now claiming or the police are claiming was part of a wider conspiracy that led to the riots, is not enough to prove terrorism. 